Hi, today I will show you how we can use quadratic residue concept to test whether a number is a prime number or not. This is an idea based on the uh, Solovey Strassen algorithm. Uh, it is one of the very first algorithms published uh, uh, to detect whether a number is a, a prime number or not. Uh, it actually was mentioned in the original RSA paper published back in 1978. Uh, this uh, Solovey Strassen algorithm was published in 1977 time frame. Okay, so what is the, the, the core idea of this algorithm? Um, the algorithm uses one of the Euler's th theorem. Okay, if P is prime, then we can be sure that the Legendre symbol uh, denoted by uh, A with the bar B, right? This part, this part is the Legendre symbol part, right? Legendre symbol. We talked about Legendre and Jacobi many times in this video segment. So, Legendre symbol is uh, when when your p is a prime. Otherwise, it's a Jacobi when you, when your p is is a composite number. It's a Jacobi symbol. Okay. Anyway, so if p is prime implies this particular part. Okay. But the problem is that the converse is not true. If uh, say the Legendre symbol uh, turned out to be um, satisfying this uh, property. A uh, legendre symbol P is same as uh, A congruent, is, is congruent to A power P minus 1 by 2 in mod P. It doesn't necessarily imply P is prime. For example, uh, let's, let's take a simple example. Uh, let me show you uh, a simple sim demo very quickly. Um, the number that we know for sure is, is, um, is a prime number, say 91. Uh, 91 is, is a composite number, right? And let's uh, confirm that um, 91 actually satisfies the property, but still um, it is not a um, prime number, okay? So the reverse, let me take P is equal to 91. We know it's a composite number, 13 times seven. Okay, what kind of uh, uh, A we can take? Let's take A to be 10, right? What about the Jacobi of uh, A in P? That's minus one. The Jacobi and Legendre are same. same. Um, uh, only difference is that uh, if your number P is a prime, then you would call it a Legendre symbol. Otherwise, it's called a Jacobi symbol. Okay, that's basically it. We talked about it earlier. So the Jacobi symbol is saying minus one. But what about the right hand side congruence? We need to put A power P minus one by two, right? So print um, A power P minus one by two in mod p okay uh, what you're getting is also 90 90 is same as minus 1 or minus 1 is same as uh, 90 because we are working with um, z star p for example or, or in any case mod p um, when you have a 91 you subtract from the p so it's so both of them are equal now as you can see um, but uh, the the conclusion though is that um, p is actually a composite number not a prime number so that's the converse of the statement that I was talking about in uh, on my whiteboard, right? I was talking about this property. If P is prime, this is true, but if this is true, it doesn't necessarily imply P is prime. But on the other hand, if this particular property is wrong, say um, A power uh, P minus one by two is not the same as the Legendre symbol, uh, then we can conclude that P is not a prime, right? So it's like this. Um, a is a proposition, um, A implies B, okay. It means that um, if uh, A is true, then B is true, okay. But if, uh, if A is not true, we don't know whether B is true or not, right? Uh, what we know for sure is that if uh, B is not true, that means A cannot be true either. So, so now that we can do the opposite. What if we try to uh, find some a such that we do a legender or Jacobi. I can use it interchangeably here. Doesn't matter. Is not equal to a power p minus one by two. So I computed the Jacobi symbol for um, this uh, thing, and it turned out to be different from a mod p a power p minus one by two mod p. What can we say? We can immediately conclude that uh, p cannot be prime right because this property is violated so if b is false a is false that's the logic we are going to do so uh, but uh, how do we make this um, 
possible in the implementation point of view. We try multiple A's, right? And um, if we find an A which satisfies this property, then we can conclude P is, is, is basically composite. Otherwise, we terminate after trying a few number of atoms. Okay, and the question is how many atoms we need to do uh, before we stop and say P is a prime. So it's basically a randomized algorithm. It turned out that um, I'm not going to the probabilistic analysis of this approach. It turned out that um, if we try, say, for example, 100 random, randomly picked A elements uh, from the group, whatever group that we are working with, and uh, apply this, this model, uh, there is a high chance that uh, if the number is uh, composite, uh, this test will satisfy, meaning um, A, a legender symbol with P, or, or I must say Jacobi symbol with uh, N, if you want to call that way, N is a composite, then uh, as long as this condition is, is uh, violated, we, that means we found an evidence um, number P is, also, is actually a composite number, right? That's basically what we are going to do. So. Um, I'm, I already talked about legender symbol, so I have actually implemented it and I will show to you my implementation now and how we can test it. Okay? So what we are going to show to you now is basic my implementation of um, my implementation of uh, Solovay's trust and algorithm. Um, I have not paid any attention whatsoever on the timing attacks, uh, branch free and um, things like that. So it's not necessarily recommended to use it in production, right? It's just a, a proof of concept to, to show how the idea of uh, quadratic residues uh, are used in, in, uh, in computational problems, like checking whether a number is a prime or not, which is a core problem in, uh, in cryptography. So here is the algorithm, right? It takes a number n and it is going to check whether number n um, is a prime or not, okay? So, uh, first thing we check is greater than or equal to zero. And it, um, actually we can, um, what we are doing here in this uh, little loop uh, is trying to find a, a random number A such that it is, it is um, uh, uh, greater than one, right? It is greater than or equal to one um, and less than N. So basically we want within uh, um, N. That's, that's, that's this particular part of the loop is doing. And then we compute a Jacobi of that particular uh, uh, element A uh, in base N, right? Well, in group uh, Z star N, if you want to call that way. Uh, and um, if the Jacobi is uh, is zero, uh, we know from number theory results that um, the the number A must have uh, some factors common with N. That means N and the A have some factors, right? That means uh, um, N must be a composite number, otherwise it won't have any any factor with A. Okay, that's basically the reason why we do uh, say here composite. Okay, uh, otherwise we go ahead and compute the right hand side, right? What, did the, what is the right hand side? If you recall my uh, slide uh, or whiteboard, I mentioned this something like this, right? A is a randomly generated number. And if we compute the Jacobi symbol um, using N. So A, N, Jacobi is computed. And if we check whether this is equal to A, a power, uh, n minus one by two, right? That's what we are checking. A power n minus one by two uh, in mod n. Okay, this is in mod n. So if we if we uh, find a violation, that means we know for sure the number n is a composite number. Okay, that's what we are checking here. This part of the uh, statement is checking whether x is congruent to y mod n. What is x? X is this part, the, the Jacobi part, and this is the y part. We check whether these two parts are equal. Uh, if they are equal, we cannot say anything, right? Um, what we say is that okay, we try it once and we return true. So this is this is important to notice. If it is not equal, we know for sure it's composite. This is good, and this is pseudo prime. That's the reason we use the word pseudo prime okay? because we just tried only once. Okay, uh, this is a small uh, typo, but that's okay. Uh, it's a pseudo prime. What about the number of atoms? I said okay. Um, I looked into the literature, right? Uh, and um, the number of atoms is a configurable variable. So usually by setting the number of atoms to be 100, um, the um, is a composite, um, the, the program detects it. Um, if it is not a composite, uh, we want the program to, to reject it, okay? So so the, the probability of wrongly classifying um, a composite number as a prime uh, is, is, is almost close to zero. Um, I must say it's like a one by 10 power um, 
or one by two power uh, 50 or, or even more. Uh, if you care about the probability, you have to look into the literature, but um, the, the analysis results that I have shown is about one by two power, um, I'm exchanging two and 10, one by 10 power 27, which is a really, really tiny probability that, um, that a, a composite number is actually uh, modeled as a prime number. Okay, so the 100 atoms is very, very small, right? You just try this algorithm 100, time, um, 100 times, in, uh, and, the, and the, if in, in any one of the atoms you get a false, that means you, you found a, uh, an evidence that, it, that this particular um, relationship is not true, that means you, you say this is a, a composite number, otherwise you return a prime number saying this number is a prime, n is a prime. So now let's, let's give it a try using some examples from uh, say RSA numbers that for sure we know are published online and we can trust those numbers instead of me generating my own numbers, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some RSA numbers, right? Here are the RSA numbers I know exist. So let's take these two numbers, okay? Here is the composite number. Um, somebody has already factored it. So we, we can check whether uh, this number is a prime or not using Solvay-Strassen algorithm that I just talked about, okay? And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll pick um, the prime number from the website, right? And that's what I'm going to do. I just uh, will select um, the first. Okay, so uh, I'm going to select this first row that you saw, and um, this 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 row, right? And I'm going to plug it into my program and show to you that um, the program will um, say it is a prime number. Okay. So let's try. So I hope that the program will now show to me that this number is a prime. Yeah, it says true. So uh, we can just play with it. Let's make it an even number. Of course, it must be false. And it's saying uh, assess an error because I'm sending an even number. It makes no sense to send an even number. Okay, because I made an assert statement that don't call me if, if my n is uh, even, right? Um, so let's not worry about that assertion. So let's, uh, let's go back and uh, pick um, another number from the website. Let's say we pick this number. We know for sure it's a composite number, right? Made of a large, uh, yeah, 768 is, is a large as a bit size. But anyway, we take this number now and check whether this is classified as composite or not. So what I'm going to do is I will just select that, right? And plug it into my program and uh, see whether the program rejects or, or um, says this is not a prime. Okay, that's a lot of, that's a very large number, as you can see. So um, I'm using an online Python version. It has some limit on the number of recursions it can make, so I need to configure it. So let me put that configuration also here. I will be configuring it to use um, uh, around uh, 5,000 limits. That's something low level detail not related to the cryptography part that I'm trying to show to you, but anyway, it's needed for my demo. So I will be importing this, right? And I will just now run it. Okay, it says false, that's good, because we know for sure um, RSA modulus is a, is a, is a composite number. That, that's, that's nice, it was able to detect that. So as you can see here, uh, this algorithm works in a pretty nice way. All it does is basically computes the Jacobi by, by randomly generating a number A, right? And then checks whether the Jacobi symbol um, is, um, basically this is the Jacobi part, right? It checks whether the Jacobi part, uh, which is written like this, A, we talked about Jacobi uh, legender symbols earlier, so I will not introduce you again and again. And this is nothing but a power uh, p minus one by two, but n, n minus, I'm sorry. Um, let me erase this to be consistent with p and n in mod n. If this is true, uh, we cannot conclude anything whether n is prime or not. But if it is false, we can conclude that n is indeed a composite number. That's what exactly we are doing. But we are trying many, many a's. And um, in this case, for example, 100 a's. If in all the 100 atoms this property is true, then we conclude that. Um, the number n must be a prime number, very likely a prime number, okay? It's not proved to be prime. So it can be possible that with a very small probability uh, of error that um, 
uh, a number that is declared as prime is actually turned out to be a composite. Okay, but nevertheless, it's it's really really tiny probability. The, the original RSA paper actually mentioned the idea of using solar based Strassen to generate um, to, to to use uh, primality testing as an algorithm for um, for their paper. But it has been modified over the years, and then um, many new algorithms have been developed. Um, but uh, but the goal of my presentation to, to is to show it to you that uh, Jacobi symbol uh, is is a very nice concept, and we can use that to uh, check whether a number is a prime or not. It's a, it's not a deterministic algorithm, as you can see. It's a randomized algorithm, but it's very uh, effective in in quickly converging um, because of the mathematical structure uh, that's being used. It's the C C N star, right? In Z and star, um, you can easily find many such A's. Um, at least, actually, half of the A's um, in Z and star uh, will help you to detect whether uh, a number n is a composite or not. Okay, that's the reason why the algorithm converges quickly. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention.